Hello everyone, my name is Sarang and in this video we will understand about the lambda layers and we will deploy one of the lambda layers of Java 21 version to AWS using SAM tool. So before moving forward, let's understand about the lambda layers. So the layer is a zip file archive that contains supplementary code or data. The layer usually contains library dependency, a custom runtime or the configuration file. So the layer which is containing the library dependencies is the one that we're going to look in this video. So let's look at this diagram and take a look at the case number one where the lambda functions are developed without layers. So these two functions have the function code along with the dependencies. Now let's imagine a case where both the functions are connecting with MySQL database. So in their respective pom.xml, they will have the MySQL connected dependencies. Now this MySQL connected dependency is present in both of the function which is a common dependency for both of these functions. Now, we can make use of the lambda layer and we can keep the common dependency of the, both of these functions into a lambda layer. Now, this lambda layer will provide the MySQL connected dependency to both of these functions at the runtime. So let's understand more using this diagram. So let's say you as a developer uploading a function code and upload a lambda layer to AWS Lambda. So when you trigger the lambda function, an execution environment will be created. And before executing the Lambda, all the layers which is configured for the Lambda function will be injected into the execution environment and then the function gets executed. So at maximum, you can configure five Lambda layers for a specific Lambda function. So keeping all the common dependency into the Lambda layers makes the function package size small. So now let's understand how to create a Lambda layer of Java 21 version. So I will go to the IntelliJ and show you the projects. So there is one common lib project and the domain project. Now the domain is a Lambda function and the common lib is a Lambda layer. The common lib has no code inside the SRC, but the domain project has a code inside the SRC. So this is a lambda function and the common lib doesn't require any function but in the pom xml it should cover all the dependency which is common to all the lambda function but here we have only one lambda function so we will add all the dependencies required by the domain lambda function inside the pom xml of common lib so inside the com uh, common lib pom xml we have two dependencies one is AWS Lambda Java Core, another one is Jackson Data Paint. So both of these dependencies required by the domain Lambda. And inside the POM XML of domain Lambda, we have only one dependencies of common lib, which kind contains all the dependencies required by the domain Lambda. So to create a Lambda layer, first we need to have the Maven compiler plugin and the Maven shade plugin. So the Maven shade plugin will help to create a Uber jar, which is a final artifact. Now the pom.xml of domain only contains common lib dependency and the scope of this is provided, which means the Maven will not add this dependency into the jar of domain lambda. The scope provided means that this common lib will be added as a part of the runtime. And the POM XML of domain also require compiler plugin and also shade plugin. So the shade plugin will be more useful in case of domain lambda when you have a specific dependencies required by the domain lambda. But here we are not adding any specific dependencies. All the dependency has been covered inside the common lib. So the Maven shade plugin will not play much role in this case. But let's say you have a dependency which is specific to domain lambda. In that case, you will have multiple dependency added over here. And when you execute the Maven shade plugin, it will add all the dependencies specific to that lambda into an Uber jar, which is a final artifact. Okay, so it's good to have a Maven shade plugin inside the domain lambda as well. So here, let's look at the function logic. So here we have a domain handler implementing the request handler interface and accepting map 
and returning a string. So we have, here we have injected object mapper. Now this object mapper is not present in the POMXML dependency, but it is present in the common lib POMXML. So here you can see the Jackson data bind is present. So there is no need to add the Jackson data bind here in the POMXML of domain. Now here we have overridden handle request, which is unmarshalling the map request and creating a user domain class. And if it's able to unmarshal, it will return the success or else it will return the failed response. Now to deploy the domain lambda function and the common lib, we are going to use SAM tool. So for that, the template.yaml has been written. Now under this, we have two resources. One is common lib resource. Another one is domain lambda resource. Now the name of the lambda layer we would like to give is the common lib layer. And the content URI will be present under the common lib project and under the layers folder. Currently, the layers folder is empty, but it has two mode folder, which is Java and lib. For creating a Lambda layer of Java, it is important to have the Java lib folder and under the lib, we have to keep the jar of common lib. So here we have given a compatible runtime as Java 21 for the Lambda layer. And also for the domain Lambda, we have given a runtime Java 21. And the name of the function is domain. The handler name and the location of the jar has been given, which is under the domain project target folder and a reference to the common lib resource. So the domain Lambda will have a Lambda layer of name common lib layer when we deploy this using SAM. So let's go ahead and first create the jar files for common lib and the domain. So come to the terminal and go to the common lib and execute maven clean install command. So this will create a jar for us. So let's copy and paste that into the Java lib folder. So when we run the SAM package command, the SAM will look at the artifact under the layer folder, which is Java lib and then the jar. So it will zip the layer folder. Now the name of the folder, which is above Java can be anything, but the parent folder of Java can be anything, but the folder under the layer should contain Java and under Java there should be a lib and under lib there should be a jar file. Now let's go and create a target folder for the domain Lambda by executing maven clean package command. So here we have target folder created along with the jar file. So we have given the location of the artifact for the Lambda which is present under the target folder. Now let's go to the location where the template.yaml is present. So template.yaml is present at the same level where the domain and the common lib project is present. So before deploying it, let's check the Java version. Now it is having 21. So now let's run the SAM package command and give the bucket name which will hold the lambda layer and the domain lambda artifact. So it has been executed successfully. Now let's run the SAM deploy command to deploy the artifact created using the SAM package command. So let's give a stack name called lambda and layer and give the bucket name where the packages or the artifact has been deployed. So it has been added here, Java 21 layer and let's give a cloud formation permission to go ahead and create the IAM resources necessary required for deploying the solution.
now let's go and check we don't have any stack created yet but once we execute the command the lambda and layer stack would be created and also in the layers we don't have any layers now but once the stack is deployed the layers and the lambda function would be present as you can see here the common lib layer has been created which is having compatible runtime called java 21 and under the functions the function is yet to be created so it is creating the function which is in progress it has created the function as well here is the function called domain and let's go to the configuration and here under the layer section we have a common loop layer uh, which is referencing to the layer version 1 so this layer version is immutable so let's go and look at the layers so here we have created a common lib layer now whenever you make a change to the jar so for example this is the common lib jar and any changes made to this jar will will create a new version here with the version 2 so the previous version will not be changed it is immutable so now let's go to the domain lambda and try to execute this function to check the layer works as expected now the request required for this function to run is in this format username and another one is email id so let's give some random name and email id so we'll try to run this and we got success response that means the lambda layer has been injected before executing of our lambda function so hope you understand about the lambda layers and how important this is to make the dependencies isolated to the from from the business logic of the lambda so in this example i have showed only one lambda but in your case there could be multiple lambdas and all of the lambdas uh, would have a common dependencies those dependencies can be added into a layer okay so hope this was a useful video to you all and if you like the video uh, please hit that like button like button and also subscribe to the channel if you are new thank you